Hey, David, thank you for joining us. You're welcome. Thank you for having me. Oh, I'm excited to interview you because I think you typify what's happening right now with uh, the baby boomer generation. You're a retired, successful real estate person, aren't you? And now you've begin to find your artist side of yourself and develop it. I've been painting for about five years yeah. and uh, I was in several galleries and just decided what the heck, I'll, uh, I love art so I thought I would open a gallery myself and um, kind of get the feel for it. Okay, but but somewhere in your in your other position in life you were working in oil and gas right? and you started having some influences come out into your artwork from that Right. Many, many years ago, I did uh, work uh, in the uh, geophysical part of the oil and gas field, and um, so I always, always liked the images that uh, uh, came from that experience. Yeah. And uh, was also, uh, you know, being from Houston, the oil capital of the world, uh, it's kind of all around you, and um, so that, that is some of the influence, certainly is. And of course, our great uh, museums here, the Manil and uh, Museum of Fine Arts. Um, you mentioned Rothko, the Rothko right, Chapel. Right, and we have a tremendous influence by uh, the Rothko, uh, by Manil Gallery, who has many Rothkos, and also uh, MFA here has quite a few. And um, always been influenced greatly by him and um, Helen uh, Frankenthaler and uh, uh, Stephen Korn and some of those people, abstract people. I've always really enjoyed their art so five or six years ago as an outsider I decided what the heck I can't afford one of those 30 million dollar jewels so I'll uh, <laughs> give it a try yeah and uh, that's what kind of started it and um, I just got after it one day and um, it's kind of blossomed from that point well I, I saw some of your work at a restaurant named Momong's down yeah. in the Montrose area and the people I w was the people I was there that with there that not uh, were really impressed by your hand you have this big hand that you paint it. It's the Warhol influence. Uh, uh -huh. I did uh, I did that for that show. Uh, it is uh, somewhat of an eclectic area and I thought what the heck would be fun to do for that show so uh, I did a six-foot hand um, uh, and uh, it was just it was just a fun project. I, I, I enjoyed doing it. it have you fun. sold the hand yet? I still have the hand. Uh, it's looking for a place to uh, to rest. Because the guys I were with kept saying they wanted to buy it and call it, tell it to the hand. Tell it to the hand, or tell it. stop in the name of uh, something. <laughs> okay. So you're, you, you move into the world of starting to paint, and you've had some really cool successes, like uh, at the Offshore Technology uh, Conference, you right. sold some sold paintings. a few paintings there, and that led to some, uh, some uh, jobs in the D.C. area, and um, uh, it's just kind of things have just kind of come together. I, I really believe that if you just get out there and put your work out there that uh, things happen. People start seeing you. And I know a lot of artists are saying, well, geez, it sounds awfully easy to get your work out there, but it really is. Uh, with people like uh, Kyle Fu and some of the other galleries, you just walk in, show them your work, and if they like it, they're going to say, okay, we'll take a couple of pieces. <clears throat> if they don't like them, they're going to tell you to go on down the street, and that's pretty much what it takes. Just keep hammering until you get your art in some galleries and then it kind of grows from there.